Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation with complex numbers. What is a complex number? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, a little bit of geometry here and there, then you can go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. And I'm not from Siberia. Okay, great, so let's get started. So to solve this problem, we're gonna be using at least two different methods. I, I could also show you a little bit about the third method and you can hopefully finish it up. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to use substitution. Notice that we have z squared and z to the fourth in our equation. There is no z or z cubed, which is good because this is considered a biquadratic, which means we can turn this into a quadratic equation by way of substitution. In other words, if you replace z squared with w, then you get z to the fourth equals w squared if you square both sides. So this becomes w squared plus 1 plus i times w plus i equals 0. And now this is quadratic in w, which is good because we have a quadratic formula. We can use it to solve it. Negative b is going to be negative 1 minus i plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 plus i squared minus 4ac. That will be 4i divided by 2, because a is 1. Great, so let's go ahead and simplify this. If you square 1 plus i, and maybe you already memorized it, you get 2i. And if you subtract 4i, you get negative 2i. So let's just go ahead and write it directly without further ado, so that we can simplify it next. Now, what is the square root of negative 2i? Now, you can do the following. To be able to find the square root of negative 2i, you can turn it into the polar form and write this as square root of 2 times e to the power i pi over 2, and then take the, wait a minute, am I taking the square root? Uh, okay, this should be a 2, sorry about that. I'm like, what? This doesn't work. Okay, it should be 2, what is going on? Okay, so this is 2 times, okay, this is 2 times that, and I want to take the square root, by the way, what am I talking about? Okay, let me start over with this. Sorry, notability isn't working for me today. So the square root of negative 2i, right? How do you write the negative 2i? You can write it as 2 times e to the power negative i pi over 2, right? So you can go ahead and square root it like this. You can square root to 2. And then when you cut that in half, this will be e to the power negative i pi over 4, right? And then you can kind of write this in, um, what is it called? Um, standard form. And then you can go from there. Or there's actually another way to do it. Remember, we just talked about it. 1 plus i squared is 2i. And you should really memorize this because it's very helpful and they come up a lot. 1 minus i squared is negative 2i. So the square root of negative 2i is then 1 minus i. It has two square roots, but we're talking about the principal square root. And obviously, the other one is taken care of by the plus minus signs. So here is what w becomes. Negative 1 minus i plus minus the square root of negative 2i, which is 1 minus i, and the whole thing is divided by 2. Let's go ahead and clear this area so we can write all the solutions. Okay? Cool. Now, here's what we have. w1, negative 1 minus i, plus 1 minus i divided by 2. Here, negative 1 and positive 1 cancels out, and we end up with negative i. And w2 is going to be negative 1 minus i, minus 1 plus i, if you negate it, divided by 2. Here, the i cancels out, and we end up with negative 1. So there are two values of w, which makes sense. And from here, we get the z values. And remember, z squared is w. So we can now replace the w's with z squared, set each of these equal to z squared. And from here, you should find two solutions for each, which gives us a total of four solutions, right? And how do you find those solutions? Well, same method. If z squared is negative 1, you probably know that the i squared is negative 1, right? I hope so. But there are two values, whose square? By the way, this is different from square rooting negative 1 uh, because uh, this equation has two solutions. But when you say the square root of negative 1, there's only one answer, okay? That's unique. 
So what about the other one? Same idea. Uh, you can just square root this. And to be able to square root this, there's a couple of different ways again. For example, you can set this equal to e to the power negative i pi over 2. And then from here, z becomes e to the power negative i pi over 4. You can just go ahead and write that down. Or the other solution is just going to be z equals e to the power. You just add pi to it and that becomes, I think, uh, 3 i pi over 4, something like that. And then you can just go ahead and write these down. And one of them is going to be negative root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 i. And the other one is going to be root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2 i. So there's a total of four solutions, which makes sense because we have a quartic equation. Of course, these solutions are nicer than the other ones. Okay, cool. Now that's the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and let me know which one you like better. Okay, so here's the second method. And most of the time, the second method is easier, shorter, seems shorter, or seems easier than the first one. But again, you're going to decide. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this, and that's going to give me z to the fourth plus z squared plus i z squared plus i equals zero. And I'm going to factor this by grouping these two and those two. Factor out z squared, you're going to get z squared plus one. Factor out i z squared plus one. Uh-oh, we got a common factor. Nice. Let's go ahead and take it out. We have now z squared plus one as a common factor. And the other factor is formed by these two, which is z squared plus i equals zero. By the way, you could also replace z squared with something like w and still do the same factoring. It will be the same thing pretty much, okay? Factoring by grouping. And guess what happens from here? You set each of these factors equal to zero, like z squared plus one equals zero, will give you z squared equals negative one, and i and negative i are going to be the solutions like before. Or z squared plus i equals zero will give you z squared equals negative i, and then you will get the exact same solutions as before. So pretty much the same solutions, of course, we're solving the same problem, but with different methods. What would happen if this wasn't factorable by grouping? Then you would just use the quadratic formula. Okay? Since I already told you that I might show you the third method, let's do that real quick. The third method kind of depends on the quartic formula, so we can kind of first isolate z to the fourth. By the way, this may not be the best approach, but for quartic, I mean. Um, there's probably an easier way to do it. Maybe keep this on the left and then add something to both sides. I don't know. I'm just trying this way. And then I'm going to be adding 2kz squared plus k squared to both sides, 2kz squared plus k squared minus 1 plus i z squared minus i. And now we have a perfect square on the right-hand side. And of course, we want to get a perfect square on the right-hand side as well. We, said we have it on the left. We want to have it on the right. And to put these two together, we're going to get 2k minus 1 minus i z squared and then plus k squared minus i. Unfortunately, this is not a full quadratic, so I can't really make it unless I add something linear. So would it help if I added something like z squared plus k quantity squared plus 2m z squared plus k plus m squared, and then do the same thing on the right-hand side. And from here, you're going to get a term like, hmm, we're not getting a z from here. I don't think it's going to work, but at least I tried. I showed you what I'm thinking, okay? And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.